Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. As some of you may already know, this year I get to chair the Texas Health Resources Foundation's Putting on the Pink Fashion Luncheon, happening April 10th. This very special event raises funds for Texas Health Wellness for Life Mobile Health Program, providing no-cost screenings to women who have barriers to important services due to lack of insurance or lack of transportation. This program has proven to be a lifesaver to so many for more than 30 years, and I am beyond proud to be associated with such a great cause. Because we all know that early detection is the key to survival. And let me just get serious for a second. It doesn't matter if you're a mother, daughter, sister, aunt. No one is immune to cancer. So please join me in getting all the women of North Texas access to these important cancer screenings. To give and to learn more is about how you can help make a difference. Go to texashealth.org P-O-P. That's texashealth.org slash P-O-P. Hello, hello, guys. Welcome back to the Glamour and Grit. And Mondays means Celebrity, celebrity Monday. Monday. Us? Celebrity. Celebr- celebrity. <laughs> Massive celebrities. And guys, these two, let me tell you, baby, they got jobs <laughs> and their jobs are good. I bet everybody uses that for you guys. They do. They it, do. I mean, it's, it's a common re- thread. It's really like the old man. Like they'll come up to us at like a wedding and mm. be like, have you found a job yet or are you still on the street? They think they're oh, like so, so, so original. Funny. Yeah. So witty. The first so people to every, ever. Everyone thinks that they created that joke. Yeah. Girl with no job, boy with no job. Yes. For those of you who don't know. Howdy. Howdy. Yeah. Quick question. You've been we're, in Texas. We're in yeah, Texas. Long Texans. Texas yeah. is in the house. Quick question. Have you reserved or like already taken like kid with no job or baby with no job? So funny. I used to like when I first started live in fear that certain with no job handles were going to be taken when I needed them. <laughs> I like used to rack up everything. I have Swifty with no job. I have wife with no job. I might have baby with no job. Somebody had dog with no job. So we got pup with no job. Uh, now, like it's not really, an, I don't think that's how my brand's moving forward. So like I don't worry about it anymore but i do have them why are you laughing because the one that you don't have used to always make you so paranoid what was it alien with do you remember alien with no job that meme account somebody used to like yeah like pretend to be within our universe yeah because that's you know eric that's what it was originally was memes yes it was memes what do you mean it was memes? our, our our original base was making and reposting memes like that's oh. how we first started to grow. Mm-hmm. And then Claudia was smart enough to see, okay, memes are probably going out of style. I should probably start posting videos. And then much like everything that I do, I latch on to her like six to 12 months later. So are you able to it's, monetize memes? Like was this a, was this a You company? were. You were, you were. It was uh, kind of like the wild west of the internet back in the day. It was yeah. just kind of wild. And I started posting on Instagram like really just for fun. It was when I was in college, I started a blog. And I was trying to get people to read my blog. So I would like post funny things on Instagram and be like, read more about this on my blog. And I eventually like fell into meme culture and you were able to monetize a little bit with um, brand deals. But then I started a podcast before the toast. Like I used to do different things. I was like DJing. I was just trying different things. I didn't really know what was going to hit. And I think my first like a big thing um after like blowing up on instagram with memes was the morning breath which is what the original name of our show was wait that's so wild you even knew to do that like did you just think like i'm a star and i'm just gonna get myself in every facet i can it wasn't it it wasn't like i knew to do something i just like tried everything and there were so many flops like my first podcast it was called girl with the podcast it was so lame and i did it by myself and i edited it by myself and you could tell and i had like the worst microphone you just like try different things and i didn't know what was going to hit and what was be what was going to be good but that's why i was like always open to doing different things and that's how i fell into stand-up because i was like let me just try it and if i'm good at it i'll keep doing it and if people buy tickets i'll keep doing it but if it sucks it'll be this thing i did once and i'll never do it again like djing which was this thing i did once and i never did it again you call them flops but you were so early she was so early to trying everything oh, like she was trying answer. podcasting before podcasting was a thing and even if girl with no job or girl with a podcast you think was a flop 
I think you did it like nine years ago. Yeah, I it do. Still would have like who the, who the fuck was podcasting nine years ago? Right. I, yeah, I definitely attribute a lot of my success to timing, especially with Instagram. I was on Instagram really, really early. Like, and I think a lot of my success can be attributed to that. Same with podcasting, and yeah. I kind of fell into podcasting because we had this web show, and a lot of the listeners were like would you put this audio up as a podcast? And I was like, sure. I literally Googled how to do it. I didn't know what that was. So being early is really helpful. And I think that's what we're seeing now with everyone on TikTok. Oh, like 1, the people who were there early, like are really reaping the benefits of that. Well, that's how yeah. we always say we're like 155 years too late to the podcasting game. So that's no. why we're bringing amazing guests like y'all yeah. to help us <laughs> because we should have done this decades ago. No, but truly. You're, but you're doing it. Right. Which we're, is like yeah, the absolute true. hardest part. Like so many yes. people, I love when people are like, oh, I had this great, I, I, I saw this brand, I thought of that first. It's like, but you didn't do it. What yeah. You didn't do it. People, you just got to do and it I'm now that you've started. And I'm a great dreamer too. Yeah. yeah. I have so many brilliant ideas and I'm like, Eric, make it happen for me. Yeah. But like you, she had the idea of to do a podcast years ago. I always say if we did this when you first brought this up, it would have been like a complete game Well, don't you have a studio in your home because you do voice acting? Voiceovers now. Like- if like and you have like a real studio in your house, that's my dream. It is so nice to be able to like I walk out my back door and then walk inside my little studio. If you don't do no, I do voiceovers. And so now because of the pandemic, we all had to have professional set studios at our house. But it is so nice. But being by yourself, I was like, I always feel like I have to have Eric to rely on. Like, did you feel like that with your sister a little bit? It's like you have somebody to sh- like shoot the shit with. Yes, I have always had like a deep, deep admiration for people who do solo podcasting, not with a guest, not with a co-host, just by, by themselves. themselves. And I've I've always been so um, in awe of it. And it's actually something I've been practicing. Actually, before I got here, I just recorded like a 30-minute solo episode for our Patreon. And I try to like flex that muscle, not for any particular reason, totally. other than the fact that like it's challenging and I want to do it. It's really hard. And and editing is helpful, but I like to just like have a stream of consciousness. And I'm, I'm not amazing at it, but I'm getting, I got better at it when um, Jackie's first pregnancy, her first maternity leave, I was like, I'm going to try and do solo episodes while you're gone. I did like two. But it's something you just have to practice. It's not something I can do regularly, but there are people who have their own podcasts who don't have guests who just do solo episodes every week. I'm like, how? It is it's amazing. So wild. No, really. No. And I remember even listening to y'all and being like, okay, Jackie's going to leave. What is going to happen? Right. Like, what is this? Because so much of it, I bet you see the viewership. We love guests. Of course. But it's when it's just you two, I think it's like, Talking shop. It's yeah. like the consistency. When you have guests, it's like that special little mm-hmm. twinkle. But it's like, though, that's why you tune in is the banter between you two. And like, I think Jackie and I made a decision like a year or two ago that we were going to stop interviewing guests unless we get like an amazing opportunity totally. like Kelly Clarkson. Of course, she's always welcome. <laughs> um, but we just didn't want to be the type of show that like our listenership was predicated on how big of a guest we could get. Totally. And it's so competitive. I think everybody, you know, who has a platform or who's like a celebrity will start a podcast and try and get like their most influential. So then you're just like fighting with other celebrities for guests. It's very hard. It's very competitive. And I think when we thought long term, we were like, if we could just get people to tune in for us, we might crack the code. It's kind of like with Joe Rogan. Like he gets amazing, amazing guests, but his fans love him so much. They're tuning in for him. But you're also at scale like it's different like people that are just starting podcasts i think that guests are a great way to bring in new listeners you don't of think course so? i think it, oh, it's like, how, definitely... like i don't know how else you grow yeah, yeah. you have to like, you have that was our show... whole theory yeah in season one it's like well we need really cool guests yes. with like our show is a monday us. friday exactly. show so friday right. is live yeah and so Ooh. we're just shooting the shit of whatever happened to us that week but monday is our guest i love and that we have like no sponsorships for fridays because we're like we want to be able to say whatever whatever the fuck we want yeah, yeah. Not like have anything below us. And we're like, our guests, let's get, that's how we get our viewership. Yep. But really it was Taylor Sheridan because he was like, you guys, they would bring us out and like not present us, but have Eric and I kind of be a representation of the Yellowstone universe because I'm like a Southern girl. Yeah. And we're like, why aren't we monetizing this? Yeah. We, and we have no fucking time. So if I ever want to have a relationship with my husband, it has to be worse. This is our time That's together. That's funny. Now, like, no, it which really is, is true. It's like it is highly this, intimate. Yeah. yeah. It's so <laughs> intimate. We're so happy to be we, here. We just like to look bedroom. to the right and they're having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> have you always been into it? Like, how did like how did this start for you? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that too. But like um, the podcasting, yeah, you, no, I'm a huge fan of good guys. No, by thank the way. you. Um, no, good guys is it's funny. I was about to say it's new. It's two years old. Time flies when you're just consistent, which is something that I always had a problem with. Like when I thought of podcasting, I started a failed podcast once called The Schwitz, where we spoke about sports, and I did it with two of my friends, and like. 
we just didn't make time. It was always like looking towards like, oh, how much money can we make? What are we doing with this? What else are we going to create as opposed to just getting out there, recording, being funny and watching it build. And then you look back and you're like, oh, we've done over a hundred episodes and we've scaled this thing to such a, such a great podcast just by just like waiting out a certain, like waiting out time. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, totally. um, so no, haven't always been in podcasting. Uh, probably six to nine months after Claudia made Girl With No Job. I made Boy With No Job. The original intention of Boy With No Job was to have male fans of her female fans. Meanwhile, it's all female fans. <laughs> now, because of the podcast, it's sort of like coming. Leveling. It's leveling. But like Claudia is like 92% female. I was always like 75% female. And now it's it's leveling, which is what I want. I want to appeal to both men and women. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> Made boy with no job, uh, and but always had a, a regular job. Was always a marketer. Like that's my how did you me feel by about trade. That, though? I liked like, it honestly. There was so, when we were first getting started, and I like sort of became like a full time creator online before that was a thing. So it was like when, right when I graduated college, which was twenty sixteen. It wasn't there wasn't like this creator economy like there is now, and I really liked that. I was doing something a little nuts, and I was making good money, but who knows how long that was going to last? I liked that Ben came with like the stability okay. being like you're always gonna have a real job because if this fails who knows we could wake up one day and instagram could be you know gone forever who you, you have both of us doing that seemed a little crazy to me at the time I, I wasn't comfortable with it i was about to say was it weird to him i would be like eric you're kind of on my turf this is my thing and no like, it coming... happened so organically yeah and ben really comes at everything with such a business mindset and i think that comes from him having um like a real fancy job for so many years that in the end i think it ultimately benefited us both. Boots build for the Western lifestyle by cowboys and cowgirls who live it every day. Their exceptional quality and unmatched attention to detail come from the heart of years of experience. You'll hear people say they don't build them like they used to. Well, the Rios family of brands does. With an unwavering commitment to doing the right things the right way, the company's dedication to family, quality craftsmanship, and the preservation of a history worth sharing is as strong as ever. Find your perfect pair today at any of their retail partners. For a full list of where to shop or to learn more about the Rios family of brands, visit riosfamilyofbrands.com. Step into the proud heritage of the Rios family of brands, a testament to the heart and soul of the American West. No, my, my experience, I think, made me such a unique person when it comes to like launching businesses like mm -hmm. you guys are involved in spritz society like that was ultimately the evolution of sitting at the intersection of creation and entrepreneurialism and if i didn't have the traditional marketing background and the understanding of the social landscape and how to leverage community and turn it into a brand i wouldn't have been able to do that and then the podcast just became like an outlet i, I was so honestly just so stressed with the amount that i was working that I had no time to just decompress, not look at my phone, not think about other things. And the podcast became an hour and a half a week of me talking to one of my best friends and laughing. Mm -hmm. well, and that's, and that's why thing. it became so, so great. Like Josh and I got to know each other on the podcast for 90 minutes. I heard stories I've never heard before. We have such like a great relationship and everybody listening to it is hearing they're like, oh my God, you guys are so funny. And it's like, yeah, it's so easy. Well, like it, I think that's also like a huge part of it and why we felt like this was like the right podcast for you is, and you guys have, you know, built in partnerships. That's what I have with Jackie. I think some of the greatest podcasts, it's like really magic between the the two co-hosts. And I think in your first podcast, it wasn't right. Yeah. No shade. They're still your best friends. They're just not built. <laughs> you know, the three of you, honestly, it was a mess. Um, but with Josh, it really was like lightning in a bottle. And so I think like the greatest partnerships make the greatest content. I think that's what we saw with good guys. And it doesn't have to be a full-time job. Like you mentioned that earlier, like just like influencing being a job. Totally. Like Claudia is not an influencer. Claudia is a podcaster. She's a comedian. comedian. She's a, a, exactly. Like there's, I got you there, bio, there's, thank so, you girl. There's, there's a there, seller, right? I mean, yeah, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. There's Come so on. much to this ecosystem that rounds out her life as mm -hmm. a professional and for me, podcasting is just a piece. Like you can have a, I'm sure you guys have complete full-time jobs and you podcast. Right. Like totally. podcasting is, if it's your sole full-time job, then you better be doing it. Honestly, Claudia does it every day and it's still not. I don't know how it, how it, it could be. be, like how it 
Like it could be, but it doesn't have to be. Oh, yeah. and I remember back in the day as actors, you weren't allowed to have any other business. You had oh. to just be an actor. And if they found out you were doing anything on the side, even I got dropped from an agency because I was producing and hosting and doing all these oh, wow. things. They're like, you need to focus on one thing because you're scattered right now and um, no one's understanding you. Right. Like, really? And now fast forward, they're like, if you don't do a million things, you can't be with Right. Oh, you're not like a media company. Yeah. Everybody's like a little media company. It's insane. Yeah. It's, it's truly insane. Did you come from that? Like your family, like you're no. such a forward thinker. You started all this years ago. It was just so accidental. I would love to like come on a podcast and say like I planned all of this. It was just something I was doing for fun. So your parents weren't like. No, okay. no. And I just really started like I remember the first time I made money. I was like, wait, then that was the first time it clicked for me where I was like, oh, my God, I can actually um make money. Like maybe this could be my job. And that was when I was a sophomore in college. And by the time I graduated, I was making significant money. And I was like. Maybe, what if I, and everyone around me was like lining up jobs for graduation and I remember thinking like, what if I didn't? What if I just continued to do this? And like maybe it was like a business and it was just this sort of really slow progression. It was not like well thought out. It wasn't this strategy where I was like in five years and 10 years. It was just, it wasn't accidental. It was just like how it happened. Yeah. And, and like it, it's, I said it earlier, you just do things though and you commit to doing them. Like Claudia doesn't half-ass anything. Totally. So like when she starts something, unlike the other like no shade on people that graduate and don't get jobs and try to pursue something. They're always half in, half out. They're like, oh, maybe I'll uh, transition to having a full-time job. She was always just 100% in everything that everything that she does. But I also like had the safety net of knowing like I graduated college. Like if things didn't work out, I was, you know, probably going to be able to get a, another job, which is why like I think in my senior year, I was missing so much school. I was traveling a lot. I was, it just made no sense to me. I was like making money. I'm like, why the fuck would I sit in this class? Like it made no sense. But like dropping out or not finishing was so not an option. One, because I just had come all this way and, and I was 75% there. But two, because it was nice to know like if I was going to do this full time, having a college degree was sort of like a safety net. Totally. Yeah. Had some like security. security to sit under yeah and what at point were you like or did it happen like this where you were like hey sis join me or... so when i started my first podcast this is how it happened i started a podcast called girl with a podcast it was so bad and i just like used to ramble and whatever and a couple of times i'm like jackie do it with me and they were like the only good episodes it was just so natural and it was so fun so when we had gotten this opportunity to do something with verizon they were like what do you guys want to do i'm like let's do the girl with the podcast shtick, but like, let's do it together ourselves. And so that's when we started The Morning Breath. And, you know, that was seven years ago. And over time, we own the show now. It's called The Toast. But it's really, it's just been an evolution of Jackie and I's on camera, whatever you want to call it. Oh, it's the best. It's like, it's the our best. morning show. It's like, that's how I know what life is. Every single, I mean, Eric was like, who are these girls that I have to listen right. to every single day? Every I know. morning. What, like years ago. Like she's <laughs> oh, been on it for so long. Oh, gee. Like yeah. morning Definitely. breather. No, but it is so wild because we didn't have that. Like everybody had, what is it? Like Jenna, Hoda and Jenna. So that was that, the goal. It was yeah. like, we always thought that we were so funny and so interesting and that we should have a daytime talk show. Nobody gave it to us. So we made our own. It was like, what if there was the view for, you know, things millennials actually care about, which totally. is, you know, The Bachelor. Right. Well, and not these huge, like, corporations behind something that it, like... Right. Sorry, but makes things, like, corrupt. Like, yes. you really can't, like, say... We were just talking about Vanessa when she was doing Pretty Little Liars. Like, it's very hard to do things when you're under an umbrella. Yes. Like, really, Pretty Little Liars was the first to have a trans character mm. come on. And that's mm. scary to do when you're under, like, ABC Family. Right. Like, and especially even Eric and I are like, all right, if we're doing this, we're going balls in. Like, we have to be so vulnerable. We have to say all of our shit. And I bet, like, even knowing, like, we can hate each other right before we walk in. And it's like. Oh, that's the best part. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like a big fight. We'll sit over like, hey, baby, how's it going? Like, Fuck you. This yeah. is horrible. Fuck you. Hey, welcome to the Claymore. It's like the best therapy ever. No, it really is. And then by the end, it's like, oh, you don't that's even why care. I love you. No, and like, totally. that happens sometimes, like, where you're just like in a bad mood or you're not feeling something. And then when you, by the time you're done with the podcast, you literally forgot about it. It's yeah. so, and you're just exactly. talking shop. It's so therapeutic. It it's is. crazy. And yeah. it's like, you're what? not on your phone. You're mm -hmm. not stressed about anything. Yes. Nothing matters. You're just talking. Yeah. Well, and it's like what you'd say at lunch. Yes. It's human connection. Yes. I just want to sit with with people that I actually would love and talk to. Fort Worth is fun for the whole family. That's right. The top-ranked Fort Worth Zoo provides all-day excitement with over 500 different species in almost a dozen habitats, including the Big Cat Habitat, Elephant Springs, African Savannah, and Texas Wild. The Fort Worth Botanical Garden is full of natural masterpieces curated into beautiful spaces like the Rose Garden, Japanese Garden, and Rainforest Conservatory.
hike, bike, or skate around 100 plus miles of Trinity trails, which take you throughout the city to various hotspots for dining and playing. Plan your stay and find out about unexpected events across the city at fortworth.com. But that's good podcasting. And like, I can already tell you guys are going to be great. Like bad podcasting, being uh, either having a bad guest or being a bad, uh, being on a bad podcast, there's absolutely nothing worse. It's not therapeutic. I don't know if you've had this experience, but like, can't wait for it to fucking end. That oh, does no, happen, no. yeah. Do you I guys get, do like so the sorry. Zoom interviews a lot with celebrities at all? Because uh, we're during not, COVID, we did. Um, but Jackie and I both were like, we're not doing Zoom interviews anymore. They're not good. Like, because we've done three or four before today, where we've done now three in person, and there's such a night and day oh, yeah. difference. There is for sure. It's like such a breather. John, like the whole you time can't you're connect like, with someone. Yes, and it's like they'll like and the audio break. sucks. Oh, and they'll break, and you're like, can you repeat that? But it's yes. like the exact same emotions. Exactly. exactly. We have to make a point of going yes. to LA for our next one. We have to go there. We I will know. do. Josh and I do a lot of remote podcasting though like i'd say 50 percent of the episodes that you hear are remote they live in different states Um, but we do them from a studio always and the guest is always with one of us oh and that's if the guest is by themselves too awkward for sure but i think that if the guest is with one of you but i guess yeah your guest would be remote no, it's so, so wild. Yeah, it's But hard. one thing about y'all is like, I don't think people realize, and I didn't realize, I've known y'all for decades. You haven't known me, I've known you. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all are obsessed with each other. Like, I really did, because I think yeah. a lot of your stick online, and not stick, but like, no, it's, fine. it's, you're shooting the shit with each other and kind of poking, y'all are in love. Like, I literally told Eric, I was like, Move. oh my God, you need to like love me like that. Like, he does not <laughs> love me like that. Like, like, Ben, we did a karaoke night and Ben is like, they're like obsessed we with weren't each there. Other. Like, Ben was just singing to Claudia the whole time. Like, the whole room didn't exist. Like, y'all are in love. That's the like, first thing she said to me when she like, called me. I was so like, how'd it go? She's like, they're so in love. That's so oh, nice. No, but, it's so, but I think people actually don't, they know y'all love each other, but y'all really have this deep, I don't know, like friendship and love and account- like it's really cool. Yeah, like we've been together for 10 years and we met when I was 18. And I remember when we got, I got engaged when I was 21 and every, like I remember people being like, that's so young, that's so young. And I was like, whatever, I know everything, like eat my ass. And <laughs> that's actually what I said. And now, like all these years later, people were right. Like it was so young. I, we were so young. And and I think about how different we were totally. when we got married. And it's entirely possible. Like we could have grown up into two different people that I didn't like. He could have grown into someone I didn't like. And I could have grown. Into, I'm so different now in every aspect of how I look, my personality, like so many things. And so I understand why people were always like, are you sure? That's very young. That's very young. And I think we got really lucky in the sense that we grew into people that we still like and we grew together. But I actually agree with people's advice now. Like if I were to tell someone, I would be like, don't get married young. Because I do oh feel God. like in a lot of ways, we are like the exception. We got very to lucky. That. We got so very true. lucky. It's like we're all bond. Like I met Eric. He was 19. I was 21. <laughs> I wasn't even we able got, to drink yet. Right. Yeah. And we got engaged 21 and 23. And like people thought it was were, crazy. We were psychos. Yeah. And I even tell people that now when they're like, oh, I'm 25. I want to get married. I'm like, 25, baby, go live your life. No, yeah. totally. Don't get, but now I can't even, when you experience like adulthood together and you're able to grow together and not separate, there's something so cool. Like, that's my person. That's my buddy. To like, contradict, though, something that you said, I do think that the person changes when they get married, regardless of how old they are. So even if you had waited It's a different until... kind of growth. It's like, it's maturity. I was a child. You married yeah. a child. Yeah. Yeah. Like, people grow up. That's what your 20s are for. Like, by the, by the time you enter your 20s and by the time you leave your 20s, I, you are two completely different people. I'm 29. I, do... I was the most annoying bitch on the fucking planet. Like, I was so... Just so different when I was just But there be said for growing up together. Yes. Because yeah. if we're both on the same playing field, then it's like, you know, I feel like. Th- we were both annoying. Yeah. Both, right. Yeah. You know, like, like it was like so. There are also so many girls and particularly guys that do not mature until they're far older than their 20s. Yeah. I like, think like I have friends that are single that are very similar to their mid 20s. Like mm, they're. Yeah. Like completely. Guys, yeah. I think, stand. Very still until, until they they're meet in the a right, relationship. Yeah. And then they start to morph into the person that they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I think girls – I also know a lot of girls that – like not that you're friends with, not to talk about uh, them. But like friends? single girls that like 
Yeah, they'll, you know, single they'll, girls. They'll change. <laughs> they'll oh. change. They'll change. And I always said, like, I didn't believe in marriage and I didn't believe in relationships. So, like, I was always a cheater because I just didn't believe in commitment or. Mar- like that. She was married to the art of acting. Yeah. No, I literally was. I literally told my mom, nothing will beat my love of the arts. So wow. I'll never get married, never have kids. <laughs> Gag. Literally. Nerd. <laughs> Literal nerd. But then I met Eric and I was like, I will give up everything. Right. I'm obsessed. I'm in love. It was like, that was it. So I think it does change. Yeah. Too, like, and the older you get in the times. And I mean, but I'm married to like a new person, whatever show he's a part of. So oh, it's that's like, funny. I do That keeps it interesting. Bit. So I do feel like, like you said, you've changed so much. I do like, you're a comedian. Like, I bet you kind of get in the zone of being a comic. Yes. Then you get in the zone of like, you're working. Like, I feel like that is with me with Eric. What about you changes? Like when you take on a role? Uh, Sandy says this happens. I don't know if it does or doesn't, but really? I guess I just um i don't know like i embody it more i'm always like little things i'm always watching that type of movie mm-hmm. like if i'm doing a western i'm constantly watching westerns mm-hmm. i'm surrounding myself with Wearing the world like, he's that character in the other two remember that episode where the yeah, guy where the that guy she's is, dating he, no the gay guy the yeah. gay brother is dating a guy who's always in character he's always in character <laughs> for you whatever project it. it's the funniest it's literally the best episode it's ever the be- oh yeah he's playing He's playing like a someone with AIDS, so he can't have sex with his boyfriend, even though they're dating. Because in his mind, he's a character with AIDS. Oh wow! You have to it's watch a crazy it. show. Oh, wow. It's an amazing it's show. It's so funny. It got this, canceled. Yeah, but this particular episode, it's so I don't know why it got canceled. I know it's the best show. It's on just TV. like a take on Hollywood, and it's yes. so funny. I have to watch it. Molly Shannon. Because um, oh, to me, it's queen. like if I can be yeah. this at home, I'm going to nail it. When right. I, yeah. No. Like, right. If I can in my natural environment where it's so unnatural. That makes sense. I don't know. It helps sometimes. I know, sense. but it is so wild. It's kind of, I can understand, like, I'll never forget we were in, like, the 1883 spree. We talked in an accent. We oh, had wow. cowboy boots. Everything <laughs> was Southern. Well, I mean, honestly, when you get a role like that, I assume that's, like, the most exciting. Like, that show, like, the cult-like yeah. following. But, like, the, the amount of people died. who watch. Like, I would do the same. I would literally become nuts just to so kill it. it's so fun to just yeah. put yourself there. I don't totally. know. At least it is for me. And you guys live in Texas. So. Totally. And it's fully embraced. But I'll embraced. never forget he came home one time and he had, like, the matching jumpsuit, like a sweatsuit. And I was like, <gasps> He's back. He got an audition. <laughs> that's so <funny>. Daddy <laughs> back. And I was so fucking excited because I was like, oh my God, if I, I literally told Eric, we went to this ball the other night and it's like black tie. Everyone looks perfect. And I was like, Eric, two years ago, you wore a cowboy hat to this. Oh gosh. Like deceased. But, 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 but we were trying to sell tickets is for this charity and we were there to sell tickets. And I was like, I just got off the run of the show. If I'm not in a hat, if you're not in character, we're not no going to sell a lot of tickets. Totally. If I'm in a hat, I'm going to sell a lot. And we broke the record for most ticket sales that, that night. So, so okay. it worked. That's your ass. We did it. But it is so wild. It's like such a relationship. And I always say, Eric knows I'm in there no matter what we're going through. Like, he knows Sainty. Like, you know Claudia. You know Ben. That it's like, this point in our lives right now, it's like, mom, I'm all mom right now. Mm -hmm. He'll get me back. Like, he he gets a little, that's why we did this podcast. He got a little of the groove back. Like, the Sainty where we can, like, talk shop, shoot the shit. And then we're getting on an airplane and it's like, mom mode. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so fun. Like, your escape Mm -hmm. of life is like, we get to be together. Yeah. Can we talk cooking for a second? Yeah. Because I am Please. so fully invested and obsessed oh with your cooking videos. You. I have a whole skit. I do, no, he I do the, the thing. whole skit. I hear we got it. <laughs> oh, you got it. No, 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 no. Every morning I wake up and he's like, okay, we got the. You We're making the eggs, <laughs> folks. Mm, you smell those eggs. Those That's actually very good. <laughs> no, it's really, He needs to do the whole stand up so It's iconic. And every time I'm like, Ben. <laughs> I love that. Wait, so how did, how did the cooking thing come about? Uh, we need a cooking show. That's all I can yeah. say. Um, we're building towards whatever it's going to turn into. Like, I don't know what that is. Is that a book? Is that a show? Is that a... I'm just making them because same thing with the podcast. Yeah. If I just consistently make things and then I'll look back in a year, it'll be like, oh, you were consistent and now it's turned into something. And these are Ben's like true passions. Like, I, yeah, like Ben's dad is a chef. If, like, I, if, I foc- oh. if I focus though on what can I turn this into, it'll turn into nothing. That's what I've learned about myself. If I just build every single day and make stuff, then all of a sudden I'll look back and I'll be able to create, turn it into something. But my dad owns a catering company. So I grew up always cooking. I loved it. It's like a Poor passion you. of mine. You get to enjoy all this uh, amazing food. I all married a woman that absolutely hates to eat delicious foods. Same. She likes to eat chicken fingers yep. and she likes to eat plain salmon. I am slowly breaking her out of her shell. Yes, but yes. But everything that I make for the most part – I eat, yeah. but like she'll like eat my steaks or or whatever. But I I needed something else to post other than podcast clips. Like her transition from memes was 
not easy, but she had the podcast, she had stand up, she had just like her natural ability to create funny videos. And for me, my progression away from memes was podcast clips. And then it was memes and podcast clips, memes and podcast clips. And it was like, what the hell is this weird brand adding in cooking videos where I can be funny, I can make delicious food. It's something that again, like cleanses my soul for an hour to just cook and have fun. It, it just, it just happened. And I'm, I love it. And it's, so fun and easy and, and I don't you're know. you're so good at it. And I'm good at it. No, yeah. but the weirdest part I say, I feel like as actors, you're playing a character. But like I feel like the influencer age, it's you. And is that scary? Do you ever feel like people expect you to be like a certain – like is it more – Well, yeah, because like if somebody doesn't like, you know, your character in 1883, that doesn't offend you. Like that's not you. Do totally. you know what I mean? Right. You're right. If somebody yeah. doesn't like you, you're like – and oh. then you're like a, a person who puts their life out online. It's like, oh, my, you hate my soul. Like, totally. It's yeah. definitely – um. I've never thought about it. Tougher. Yeah. But I think, and I used to not feel this way. I used to be very, very sensitive and like really take things to heart. But the longer you do it, like the less fucks you give. Now it's just, um, it's just something you have to like understand. It's par for the course. You really can't take it personally. People are so desensitized on the internet. Like they don't realize they could be saying like the nastiest thing about you. Like, because to you, to them, you're not a person, you know? Totally. You're just like this thing on the, on the online. No, what it you makes can't sense, take it personally. even y'all coming, it's like so much of y'all I knew, but then it's like, oh my God, like getting to know you guys, and like, I will say y'all are two of the most special kind, like y'all became family. Like yeah, truly my parents wanted to adopt you both. Oh my God, we They're wanted to take them home with us. No, but you're so <laughs> calm and relaxed. Like I think people, I expect I think y'all to put on a show, and y'all well, are amazing listeners and kind and just very sweet. Like, it's so rare Thank to meet you. two really Thank sweet, you. sweet people. Very sweet. It's so nice. But, you know, sometimes it does feel like um, when you meet someone who, like, follows you or who listens to the show, there's this expectation, like, that, that you're going to, like, perform when you meet like them. Like, dance, monkey, dance. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, like, sometimes people are just, like, dance, monkey, dance. And yes. I'm, I'm I'm not quiet by any means, and I'm certainly not shy. But, like, when I'm out and about, I'm not being a nut all the time. Like, I'm just, like out to dinner with Ben or like with my family. Like you're, you're really only a nut when you're actually comfortable and friends with the person. Yeah. You turn into that version. It's weird. The version that they want, they can't get unless they don't want that version. Right? Uh, like if they don't we... say like monkey dance, yeah. she's going to dance. But yeah. if they ask for it, you'll be completely turned off. Mm -hmm. Now you don't come from families that are in this at all. So how would like, what is it? How does your family feel about this? You guys are out. People are coming up to you now. Like obsessed. Uh, did they love it? Are they like <laughs> yeah, the coolest yeah, thing they ever. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Obsessed. I mean, we're so lucky, like that we get to do this for a job. Like, yeah. and, and I'm fully aware of that. Like, yeah. they say, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I don't necessarily agree with that because, like, work is work. Amen. Gotta but, pay the bills. but like, we are so lucky. Like, we totally. love what we do so yeah. much. And I think, like. Our families are just like happy that we're happy, right? Yeah, and everybody I think loves what we do because we aren't playing roles. We are just playing ourselves. Like, and uh, you're so authentic in yeah. what you do. And like, if you've had a bad day, and like the vulnerability, it's like it can't be all rainbows and sunshine. Even though, like, I love when y'all are on a podcast and you have had a bad day, and you can kind of tell it first, and then it's like you're able. I'm with my sister. Yeah, I'm with Eric. Like, I'm yep. gonna end up. Having a great time. It always turns it around. Always. Yeah. Even it's in so the, special. Even in the beginning though, like when when you were just starting out doing it, were your parents or family ever like, okay, let's let's get a real job. This can't yes. be a thing. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Okay. I think it took a while. And it wasn't even just only my family. It was just like everyone around. It was such an unserious thing at the time. And when I was like, you know, advocating on my own behalf as like a 21-year-old girl with a voice that's, you know, a little vocal fry and every other word out of my mouth was like, 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 like. Yeah. It was very tough to be taken seriously by everyone. And I think um, the first thing that, pe like, that really got people to, like, take me seriously is, like, when you, you know, just start explaining, like, the finances of it all, people understand money. And so when you explain, like, no, here's how I monetize and I actually made X last month, like, then people people shut the fuck up, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what gets people to yeah. – um, Totally. To take you seriously, which is so sad. No, but it's true. My money talks. Yeah. As we all know. Yeah. Now, when you went on the road as a comedian, how did that all begin? Like, how did you practice? Did you work with a fellow comedian? Like, that is, I think, the most vulnerable. Because I did, like, Growlings and what was that other one I did in L.A.? I got all the way up. UCB. UCB. Oh, wow. Holy. <clears throat> so I did the final level of UCB. Wow. Like, you know, where they all... The most intimidating thing. And yeah. you're with people, though. Like, you're at least shooting the shit and doing yep. skits together. When you are by yourself, 
it, it's horrifying. It's next level. If I didn't think that I had a natural inclination for it, I would never, ever do it again. Um, and it was just one of those things, like I was saying in the beginning, like I wanted to try everything. And I'd always been told that I was funny and that you should do comedy, you should do comedy. But I really felt very strongly that I was like a funny person, not a comedian. Because some comedians you meet are like not funny. Like you wouldn't like have fun with them at dinner. Totally. But And some really funny people like couldn't write a formal joke to save their and lives. And sell out Madison Square Garden. So it's different. And I was like, let me try it. And I was very lucky that like I got to try it in, in a space that I was really comfortable in because I was like, I think I can sell tickets. I got Caroline's, the comedy club on Broadway, to give me one night. It was sold, you know, tickets sold only to my fans. It sold out. And I was like, okay, great. Now let's figure out what to do. And I'm sure if I were to, you know, rewatch that night, I would be horrified. But in the moment, I was like, you know what? There's something here. And at first, it was like I would do little shticks. I did like a q and I did like a 10-minute monologue. I did a game. Ben came up. And slowly, I literally but, spoke about Zyrtec for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Honestly, thinking about that. <laughs> Which like, is now like illegal or like off the shelves, isn't it? Is it? Zyrtec? What's the one that we... Zizol? No, the Z one that... Um, oh, I think... Uh, yep, yeah, you're right. Like Zyrtec, the pregnancy, they like you weren't allowed to take it while you were pregnant it. or what something. What the hell? Yeah. I do remember that. And it was like really scary oh because all the pregnant women like freaked the... But this was pandemic, what? so everybody was, was freaked it come out. Back? Probably so. I think it's gone. No, no Ben like buys it every day. No, I have Zyrtec. Oh, okay. Unless I need to like stock up. Yeah, we're, we'll remember. Sorry. But like, we would like bicker on stage for 10 minutes and like yeah, they, the crowd cute. would love it. No, and I it know. it was fun. And what yeah. we did was like, we had all these little games and that 10 minute monologue that I had, I would stretch every night to like 15 minutes to 20 minutes and then would drop off like a dumb segment with Ben, you know? <laughs> like Ben was the first to go. I got the boot. <laughs> yeah. But it was like that 10 minutes, if I just slowed down and expanded more on the stories and made more jokes and a punchline here, that 10 minutes eventually became 90 minutes and that was the whole show. Oh my God. And that's how I basically learned how to do stand up. And did you have a coach or any, or you're like, hey, Ben, Jackie, come listen to yeah, me? Are you, no, are I you did. You trying jokes on Ben? Yes, but it's just like you can't try a joke on one person. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just not. She'll refine jokes. She yeah. won't. She won't try them for the first time. But I did actually work with this woman. Um, she was she's basically like a comedy coach, and I like would come to her with my material, and she would work through it with me. And she also just taught me a lot about like comedy club culture, and you know. Just like a little bit, you know, pulled the curtain for me on like what, because she was like this old school, really old school comedy woman. She was from the, I don't forget where she was from, but she lived on the Upper East Side. And she just like kind of taught me the ropes a little bit about like how to act and what to say and what to do and, you know, how to be respectful. And and it was, um she was great. And, and I, once I had turned, she helped me turn that 10 minutes into 90 and she would help me like with what what we should get get rid of you know let's get rid of the audience q and a you don't need that totally. and then she was awesome and then once we had that 90 minutes she kind of just like let me go and and i took that 90 minutes around the country i think i did like a hundred shows with that first tour I feel like there was like almost two years or a year and yeah a half. you were definitely two yeah. years Mainly only doing that i mean you were doing the toast but yeah and by the time i finished that last show and i filmed a special it was like a there was not one joke in there that was at the first show. Like, it was completely reworked. Isn't that wow. unbelievable? Do you just add things on the road yes. like, as it goes, like road stories? Yeah, and, and sometimes, like, something naturally will happen on stage very improv, and if it hits like crazy, I can, like, add it to the to the bones of the show. Totally. Do you ever think, because now, like, being in the podcast game, Eric had a little incident yesterday. Oh, God, what happened? When he clogged up the toilet in the hotel. <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> Y'all, the worst. I wanted to oh die God. for him. Imagine so, how he felt. No, oh. but the whole time you're thinking, like, I got it on my phone. And I was like, I have to use this. Like, yeah. I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> But even just having to call down to the lobby and it's be like, humiliating. Um, I've n- and that's never happened to me in my life. It's yeah. never happened to me at my house. I'm well, like, and I think Eric, sure. like, God love him too. I was like, you have to tip too. Like, you've got to give him a big ass tip. Like, I don't, I think he was so mortified. And I was like, oh, I'm hiding under the blanket. Well, I just told him I, it was my wife. Like, I, oh. I completely blamed this. <laughs> I was divorce. like, divorce. Divorce. She's like stressed. <laughs> I would rather fart out loud. <laughs> Literally. Rip, she like, hid under the covers. Yeah, I would too. No, but it's so much stuff like that. You're like, oh, remember this. We have to talk and getting used to like our first thing we said to each other we are doing this we're doing it right we got to be vulnerable we got it there are people and it's hard for me too it's so much as like a children's show voiceover actor it's scary like saying my opinions about yeah. things and like really expressing like i'm a cusser and i remember the first time being cusser. like we did blues clues and i was like eric like are we allowed to cuss like right. can i be a cusser if i'm gonna do this i have to do it authentic and I have to be myself and we have to tell stories about ourselves and really put it all out there, which is so scary as like an actor. It yeah. is. But I do want to say one thing that I feel like I've learned, like if I can impart one piece of wisdom. Please. And I think like we're conditioned. I, there's like this sort of like social 
contract that if you're going to become a public figure, like everything in your life is sort of open to interpretation. You have to share everything. You're not allowed to keep things private. It's just like this weird social contract that you sign. And I don't subscribe to that. And I feel like it took me a really long time to learn this, but it occurred to me like, you know, every thought or every experience that you have, like you don't have to share. Totally. And I have found like keeping things for myself, small things, big things, whatever it is, like I'm entitled to that. And I've, I actually think it has helped me balance this, you know, line of work and like mental health super well. <coughs> oh, I can't even imagine. Cause especially even like going in on my phone a lot, it's like, what do I share? What don't I share? Yeah. What is, it's such a weird. Like, I think a great thing. example is like, I made the decision to take Ozempic and I did not share that with anyone for about a year. And then once I felt really comfortable in my journey, I'd lost a lot of weight, but I'd also like managed my own bullshit, my own anxiety with weight, like things I've dealt with my whole life. Once I felt like I was in a good spot and I actually really wanted to share, I had this like crazy desire almost like for like weeks on the podcast, I almost blurted it out because I just had so much to say. It was changing my life so much and it was so positive. And and I waited a really long time. And sometimes I think back and I'm like, I wish I shared it sooner. But I'm so glad I took that time for myself. Totally, because it was because, yours. Because it was yours. And weight, at least for me, is so personal. Like Ugh. it's so – it's something I've struggled with my whole life. I'll probably struggle with my whole life. And that was one of the things where I was like, you know what? This is nobody's fucking business. Like this is my – between me and my doctor. Yes. And between – I mean, I have my entire life. And there's – you just don't get it unless you've experienced mm-hmm. it. And it's like – it just – and even Eric, Eric's always like, just eat healthy. Or just – and I'm like, you if you can't don't, yeah. say shit yeah. unless you have been there. It's true. And it's like, there's well, nothing first like, she says, what do I do? And then I say, well, eat healthy. And she's like, you can't yeah, say you shit. Can't. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what do I eat healthy? Jackie <laughs> just taught me this thing. <laughs> that sounds Jackie, right. Jackie it just sounds taught me this right. thing because I agree with you. That's funny. And it's like when you're arguing with your partner – Sometimes you want solutions and sometimes you want compassion. And so if I were to say like, oh my God, I am nonstop gaining weight. I don't know what to do. You would then say, Ben, do you want solutions or compassion? Because you're telling me to go on a diet like, bitch, I fucking know. Shut up. Like, I'm just looking for somebody to commiserate with. Totally. So it's like, like are we looking for solutions? Me. Are we looking for compassion? Usually we're not looking for solutions. No, right. and my grandfather. But we're solution oriented. I'm going like to solve your problem. You are yeah. a solution. I'm going to solve your problem. But we don't want, we don't need it solved. Thing. We already it's, know. It's so annoying. No, it is but, so but, true. But, but perhaps you don't. Like, I don't. Oh, God. Because well, you're so much smarter than us. No, I'm just saying. Like, maybe you're only looking at Western medicine, but Ben knows a lot about the East. Oh, and, okay. I, and, I, and I can give you a concoction. I, I have to leave uh, to get rid of this your, conversation. To get rid of the itch in your throat or whatever's really? going on with your eyes. Really? Because you've been coughing eyes. this whole time. You obviously haven't found a concoction. By the way, I'm only on day four. I'm going to be fine. You're going to be great. <laughs> How much better am I? <laughs> Look. I'm, I'm fully fine. And my It took... Oh God, I'm not. So, so much can you no. explain to oh me because I'm doll. so stuffed right now? I can't Wait, even. Wait, I need to tell you. Gaia no herbs. Hey G A I A. Oh, look, you're serious about the Eastern? Oh medicine. yeah. Oh, you oh, are yeah. like a Gaia? full in it. Freak. Oh yeah. He takes turmeric. I'm a I'm a Chinese doctor. So Gaia I'm, herbs. Gaia for, herbs for is my favorite. Condition. Gaia. G A I A. Yeah, they have a bunch. They have a bunch of shit. But my it favorite does not work. Uh, is Quick Defense. It's a combination of elderberry and echinacea. Boom. Clears you up. So you two really days. are an all natural. No, we were in a place. Yeah, this the is other all night. I needed to hear. By the way, I'm going oh, he's to buy all. all of this. Good stuff. Whole Foods. They have them all at Whole Foods. All the shit. Thank no, you. we were at. It doesn't work. The it doesn't work. I literally, I literally cured her. She had like the bronchitis, so, the worst bronchitis. No, no. You know what cured me? I finally went to the doctor. I got prednisone and amoxicillin. I had sinusitis. Yeah. Because I believe in Western medicine. A shot in you the didn't ass believe in Western medicine. You didn't believe in Western medicine for three weeks. You literally gave me turmeric and echinacea, and I'm like vomiting, gagging, <laughs> taking these huge, disgusting, smelly echinacea. pills. Didn't work. Turmeric, is your pee turmeric changing is colors. And disgusting. The whole thing. Do you take turmeric? Uh, no, but I should. But he takes we it have it in the cupboard. We do have it in we our have inflammation. It. Our cupboard. It's great. Okay. We got it in our cupboard. It's no, we fantastic. were sitting at the enemy of the people last night, which is Jeremy Strong of Succession. So mm-hmm. I was like, I had to see him because he's like those psycho yes. method actors. Yes, he is. And I was like, Eric, let's go. We got to go. And I'm sitting in the play and it's like, I'm like, nobody can talk because it's Jeremy Strong. Like, you will be kicked out. Like, yeah. it is, it's supposed to be an experience. And I've got Hey Arnold behind me going, <sighs> She's, I can't and I breathe. look at him I can't during breathe. the intermission. I'm like, Eric, somebody is breathing. Like, <sighs> you know, the nerd <laughs> in Hey Arnold. And he's just <sighs> sitting there and I'm like, oh my, and he goes, that's me. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, I was, it was the last, so he was louder than Jeremy Strong. She would right? not so stop funny. talking about it. And I'm like, the more you talk about it, the more, more awkward attention. it's going to get. It's going to be really but annoying. But whatever you do, don't take Sudafed. But don't take any of that crap. <gasps> See, that's Sudafed. what I've been taking. Don't do it's it. Not no, because all that it does Sudafed is it, te- is amazing. it temporarily dries you out, but it keeps you sick. It's like Afrin. 
You're, you're not gonna you're get, changing my life right now. You're not now. gonna get better. Wouldn't you rather just oh my get God, better? Eric is gonna end up in the hospital. Wouldn't you rather <laughs> get better? <laughs> and he's so and tiny. Thank you. You're gonna get better. You're gonna She's get better. like, here's a Sudafed, here's a this, yeah, here's, here's a Mucinex. Mucinex. Here's I love, I love shot. over the counter drugs. No, we By the way, love medicine. Mucinex? Representative. No Mucinex, remember? Yeah, no, Mucinex is bad. I took Mucinex V once. Is this a PG show? Or yeah. you, no, 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 it's, no, it's, it's fine. There's right. like, this happens to like 1% of side effects, so this has not happened to a lot of people, but it did happen to bad. I, I took, I took Mucinex V, and at three o'clock in the morning, I was hard for three hours. What? No. Three Are you sure it was Mucinex? Because Mucinex is blue, and something else has never happened to me in my life. No, no, it's Mucinex T. Three but did hours. It hurt? Like if it's yes. something that yes. like yes, it was they the said worst. They said to go to hospital. It was the like worst. It was than... the worst. It was the worst night of my life. I was dead asleep. <gasps> Mucin XD was... never would have fucking happened What's with in echinacea. It? What's in it? Never would have happened with turmeric or elderberry. I don't know. But we Googled it and it what Ben was not the only person that's happened to it. And it's like a very small amount of people experience the side <laughs> effect. We were cackling. It's just like Zoolander. You're just like, yeah. can't it's get the, it down. It's the D in Mucin XD. What? what? It's the big old D. <laughs> it's the D. No, that, that was it's Eric with COVID. He had COVID and his life. whole face like turned into Elephant Man. Oh, I thought you were Really? Bizarre, y'all. It's yeah. like his lip was like way out, like wow. one of the, like Simpson characters. Oh my goodness! How scary is that? Me up. I don't know. And yeah. this was like scary COVID time. You go to the not hospital? Like fake COVID time? No, like, I took Benadryl or something. <laughs> yeah, I should have been enough. taking. No, Benadryl, I think is good. Okay, we should look up the natural for Benadryl. What a natural Benadryl is. It's a punch I in the really face. I really do not realize you're like an all natural kind of fellow. I am. I'm transitioning towards it. Oh I love it. I, I love I'm that not too. All because natural. I took like 19 Advil today. Like there are some things that I really <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. for sure. We're in a big Advil um, house, but uh, oh, lo- and the combination oh, of Advil and Tylenol. Tums. That's yeah, called- you're a Tums king. And Me? then what's the one that I've Matt always take. takes? Um, well, he's lactate because he has a. Oh yeah, the la- I uh, think we, that's we don't all have those problems. Lactate. No, you don't. I used to be lactose intolerant. I, I eat enough fettuccine okay. Alfredo. You just become immune. You overpower. You that. either die or you become immune. I think that's great and advice. And I became immune. I ate enough fettuccine, had enough diarrhea, and all of a sudden I can eat dairy. <laughs> Seriously, I swear to God. What oh is my it gosh. like where they say like the power, like the weak people will all go into yeah. the power? Survival of the fittest. Yes. Survival of the fittest. Thank yeah. you so that's much. It. Like a kid has a nut allergy, just give him nuts for like two weeks. Either he dies or he's no longer Actually, they don't have to do that. They say give your baby peanut right. butter so that yeah. he doesn't get the peanut allergy. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that actually one. is a thing. And what's they the tell worst you, thing like, could happen? To... Yes, they do. Yeah. They like Do-death? start peanut butter early. Yeah, <laughs> you, live you, you live and you learn, and you die, uh, guys. This has been awesome. Yeah. I cannot thank you oh so much God. for coming in. Thanks and for having making us. our New York trip so special. Y'all are the most special people on. You no, know, I do. Like, I need to go back for a second because you said save some things for yourself, and I feel like I blurted it out. But I feel like you two together and y'all's like love is such your like you keep it for yourself. Like that is y'all's safety. That is y'all's beautifulness and it's thank so you. cool Very sweet. Thank that you. we got to experience it sorry gang Ugh. but it would it is magical and you two are magical and what is what's next what do we think we're gonna do next probably lunch yeah lunch oh my god Sa- we're yeah. starving <laughs> did you mean in life yeah, yeah. I, was I, was I, was I was kidding but that was, was a joke oh. i got it i oh. got yeah. it d- d- y'all know we are all <laughs> actual Dude, former fat kids yes. i'm starving always I mean, that food too. Can't After wait, hearing up Fredo and all that. Okay, well, we we do end our show. What is your glamour and what is your grit? Like, it can okay. be glamour of your life, your glamour of your day, and your grit. What do you mean? Yeah, no, I don't Like, understand. my grit right now is a stupid sinus infection. Oh, like, yeah. Got it. My so glamour high, is getting to be here with you guys. Highs and lows? Yeah, like yeah. what you did at the round table as a kid. Remember you do your peak and your perk yeah. or whatever that thing is yeah, called? Yeah, yeah, my yeah. glamour is that we just took a trip to St. Bart's, which is a place I've always wanted to go to. And it was just as good, maybe better than I thought it would be. And I had like this moment of like existential. I was like, this is going to be a trip we're going to tell like our grandkids about. Like, we're going to have pictures. Like, I just, it was so fabulous. It was like a trip I'll remember forever. And it was somewhere I've always wanted to go. And I did it. And it was fabulous. So that's my glamour. My grit is um, I drank so much and smoked a thousand cigarettes. I don't even smoke cigarettes on this trip. I don't have a voice. My voice is my job and I'm in hell. Yeah, but there's nothing better than like a late night cig. Like, please, Marvel, please represent You should do an episode of episode. Gabby's House on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gab- no, but I will say I was on the Jeff Lewis show and oh, I did my voice, obviously. And Anthony Anderson said I sounded like a 70-year-old smoker. Can you do it? Yeah. Hey guys, it's me, Pillow Cat. You do? Yeah. No, it's funny. Smoker. So good. Ben, glamour and grit. Glamour. I think that my glamour is now that we are home, we were in Florida for two weeks. Yeah. We we're in St. Bart's. I haven't been home. I have that feeling of I'm so fucking happy to be home. Oh. And there's no better feeling than that yeah. when you're home. Like loving your city. And yeah, I'm just like. In your bed. It's all fantastic. Oh. So state of mind is my glamour. Grit is. Uh, Weather. It's disgusting. Oh, it's we were torrential. Ju- we were, uh, yesterday we were in 11 UVs. Today we're in negative 11 UVs. It's freezing. Yeah. 
It's dark. And so, I operate, I think this is my eastern side. <laughs> I operate heavily on the sun. Sun is my mood. Like if it's, if the sun's shining, I'm happy. I feel like if you're the, in the wrong city. Yeah. I mean, it's not Seattle, but it's not great. Not like no, a, it's not great for a sure. Sunshine state. Last no, question. Not. Are you have a deal with these sardines or what's the deal with the sardines? <sighs> No, definitely no deal because okay. uh, I absolutely read them to filth. So if if I had a deal with them, uh, that was just they, an they experiment. Would, they would hate it. My friend told me he's like these are the best sardines. You have to go and get them from this grocery store. I went in and the guys like yeah we have the Rolls Royce of uh, anchovies. Oh, anchovies. And, that's what and uh, we tried them and I fully expected to love them. Like I didn't I didn't think that I'd hate them, and they were. Horrible, and are everybody told like the little balls. No, they're salads. huge. Lo- they're long fish. They're like I know. What are the little balls, salt balls on Caesar salads? Are those anchovies? The, yeah, there yeah, are anchovies in Caesar okay. salad. So, yeah. so apparently, you're not supposed to eat them by themselves. It's rare that people like them by themselves. You're supposed to use them in things. Yeah. So maybe I'll use them in something and give it a try. Um, but yeah, they were freaking disgusting. Okay, I was just curious. Oh, so overpowering. Yeah. It's terrible. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh my God, speaking of that, thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks, See you guys. on Friday. Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. <laughs>